Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, my dear brothers and sisters in Islam. Welcome to a new live episode of our program, The Straight Path. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make tonight a night of His remembrance, a night of seeking His forgiveness, and a night of coming closer to Him through everything that we say and everything that we do, inshaAllah. Uh, it's a great honor and a great pleasure for me to be with all of you tonight here, my dear brothers and sisters, as always. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make everything that we say in this uh, episode and in every single episode of this program in our scale of good deeds on the Day of Judgment and to grant us sincerity in our actions, inshallah, whether I'm the one speaking or you're the one listening or you're the one speaking as in today, inshallah, because today is a very, very, very special episode dedicated simply to taking your questions and hearing your thoughts and your comments about the previous 10 episodes of the program. Alhamdulillah, Rabbi Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters, we've completed 10 live episodes of this program. Uh, it took a lot of hard work, a lot of hard work uh, from all the brothers and sisters involved in uh, preparing and all, uh, whether it's the studio crew, whether it's uh, the director, whether it's uh, people preparing for the program. And uh, subhanAllah, uh, we made it. We made it 10 live episodes, alhamdulillah, of this program. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us, to guide us, to forgive us our sins and our bad deeds, inshaAllah. Um, inshaAllah, since the beginning of this episode, we're going to have our phone lines open and uh, waiting for your calls uh, anytime uh, throughout the next hour, inshaAllah. Ask uh, any questions that you have about uh, the topics that we discussed in the previous episodes or any Islamic questions you have in general. Uh, not fatwa questions though, uh, any fiqh related issues, inshaAllah, should be reserved uh, to asking your local imam. Uh, a fiqh issue is simply, uh, if we put it in simple terms, we can say that it's whether something is halal or haram. Uh, reserve that for your local imam, inshallah. But other questions that you have in general or maybe a personal problem that you are going through, feel free, inshallah, to give us a call at any time and share your thoughts and your comments. Our phone number, inshallah, is 002 248 or 249. Again, the number is 002. 0238555248 or 249. Uh, throughout the past week and the past couple of months, I uh, have received many, many questions from uh, brothers and sisters from all around the world. And I have to apologize at the beginning of the episode for not being able to answer all of them. Uh, Allah subhanAllah, it, uh, it's questions from coming from all around the world. I tried to pick what I can for today's episode and I came up with this short list of, of questions that I feel cover uh, some of the main topics. Uh, but obviously, uh, I'm not able to answer every single question. I'll try my best to answer you on Facebook. If you send me a message on Facebook or if you've sent me an email, uh, inshallah, when I have uh, a little bit more free time. But uh, until then, inshallah, I believe that these questions were the most questions that people were asking about. Um, and the most important topics that I feel a lot of people have questions about. And of course, uh, the phone lines are open. So inshallah, feel free to give us a call and share your thoughts, your comments, and ask more questions live on air, inshallah. Um, the first question is from Sister Samiha. And Sister Samiha says, Assalamu alaikum, uh, ya akhi, I'm Samiha. Uh, if you don't mind, if I can ask you a quick question. Which salah does not have a particular time and can be done at any time? Is it salat al-istikhara or salat al janazah Waiting for your reply soon. Okay, the salah that I believe that you're referring to is not salat al janazah Salat al janazah is a prayer that we make uh, for the dead person. The person who dies, we make salat al janazah for them. But the, the salah that you're referring to is called salat al istikhara the salah that we, the may, that we make and the, the dua that we make after it, when we are between two issues that we don't know what is best for us. For example, if uh, you're applying to a new job and you don't know if this job is whatever is best for you or if it's not, then you make salat al-stikhara. Should I uh, leave my country and travel to this other country so I can move to this new job or should I not? So you make, uh, you, you pray uh, the Salat al-Istikhara and then you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the essence of the dua that, Oh Allah, I want you to choose for me, whatever is best for me. 
And subhanAllah, the predecessors, our Salaf and the Sahaba, used to make uh, istikhara on anything that is halal. Anything, whether it's something big or whether it's something small. So it's something, my dear brothers and sisters, that we should always be doing. Whether the decision that you're making is a really, really tough and big decision, or if it's something small, whether you should go this place uh, to this place today or you shouldn't, uh, make salat istikhara to uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless you and to help you inshallah. Now how do you uh, pray Salat al-Istikhara? First of all, all, all the scholars of Islam have uh, agreed that Salat al-Istikhara is a sunnah. It's not a fard to, uh, to pray Salat al-Istikhara, but it is a sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, something that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself used to do. Uh, the, way, the way to do it is basically you pray two rak'ahs, okay? Then after you pray these two rak'ahs, then you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala known as dua al-istikhara. The dua for asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, making Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala choose for you whatever is best for you. So uh, obviously the, the way you do it is uh, rather simple. You uh, of course have an intention, you make wudu, and then you pray two rak'ahs. You pray these two rak'ahs, some people say at night, but that's not necessarily true. You can pray them at night, but whenever you need something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, feel free to make Salat al-Istikhara and, and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for whatever it is that you need. So you pray uh, two uh, rak'ahs, of course, uh, sunnah, two sunnah rak'ahs, and then after that, you ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for what you want. And the way you do that is you first begin by uh, saying Alhamdulillah and praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you say the salah on the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Ali Muhammad. And then after that, you uh, say the dua of al istikhara And the dua of al istikhara inshallah, we're going to say it after we take uh, this call. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Yes, brother. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is Muhammad Fahim and I'm calling from KSA. Okay, okay but, but Brother Muhammad uh, yes, from Saudi Arabia, go ahead. Apologize, we're having some technical difficulties in the studio. You're joining us today uh, and, and hearing what we're, we're doing, Brother Muhammad. Go ahead, Brother Muhammad. Okay, sir. Actually, the reason I call you to say salam, assalamu alaikum, because I love you so much, because just now I went to Facebook, I saw the program is starting now. Just now I owned uh, the TV just to say, just to talk to you and say assalamu alaikum, because I'm so happy that you assalam. answered my call. That is more than enough for me. I learned a lot of things exactly. from you. Lot of things. It, uh, I can. I cannot. I cannot expl explain how much I learned from you. Zakallah khair. I, I, yeah. I download every single video. Zakallah khair. Thank you so much, Brother Muhammad. May Allah subhanahu wa taala reward you. Allah, uh, these comments uh, uh, make a, a big difference for me in, in in continuing in the path of da'wah because definitely it's 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 not easy. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, Brother Muhammad. Zakallah khairan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything that we say and everything that we do uh, uh, sincere. And uh, inshallah, I know the phone line cut off, but if you're able to call us back, feel free to give us a call, inshallah, at any time. And my dear brothers and sisters, our phone lines are open uh, beginning right now until the end of the episode, inshallah. So feel free to give us a call at any time at 002 02 248 or 249. Again, the number is 002 02 3855-248 or 249 uh, Going back to the question about uh, Dua al-Istikhara, okay? You're making Dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I want you to go and if, you, if you're keen on making Dua al-Istikhara, I want you to go up and look it up online. And you don't have to say it in, in Arabic, you can say it in English as well or in any language that, uh, that you want to uh, say it in. And again, the, the point of Dua al-Istikhara is that you're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, if this is what is best for me, then give it to me and make me content with it. And if it's not, then keep it away from me and grant me something that is better. Absolute dependence on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Dua al-Istikhara, my dear brothers and sisters, is really the manifestation of being a true Muslim. Because when you are a Muslim, basically you are submitting yourself to the will of Allah. And when you make dua al-istikhara, you're also submitting yourself to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You're telling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Oh Allah, make the choice for me. Okay, uh, when you say dua al-istikhara. Now, another question about dua al-istikhara is, uh, should I make it during salah or should I make it after salah? 
the correct uh, the correct understanding is that you should do it after you have said your taslim. You say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, and then you go ahead and you make uh, dua al istikhara. Uh, you raise your hands and you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa taala, and you make dua al istikhara. Now, a very popular issue when it comes to dua al istikhara that a lot of people uh, have a misconception about. People make dua, uh, dua al istikhara and salat istikhara at night, and they expect to see a dream. And they feel that if the dream, uh, you know, goes in such and such way, then I should do this. And if it doesn't, then I shouldn't. And what happens to most people is that they don't have a dream. Now, this is a misconception. You could have a dream. You could, uh, just like anybody uh, can have a dream, and it could be uh, a glad tiding from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But this is something not necessary at all for Salatul uh, Istikhara. You make uh, dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you continue in the path. If whatever it is happens, then it is what is best for you. If it, it doesn't happen, then it is what is best for you. For example, a very popular issue that we make uh, dua al-istikhara and salat al-istikhara about is uh, the issue of marriage. You make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I ask you with your knowledge and I ask you because you know and I do not know. If marrying this person is whatever is best for me, then make me marry this person and make me content with it and happy with it. If it's not what it's, what's best for me in my deen and my dunya, then keep me away from it and at the same time uh, and at the same time replace it with something that's better. So you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For example, a sister who a brother uh, comes to her family and he, he proposes to her. So she makes dua al-istikhara, it's the salat al-istikhara and then she makes the dua right after it. Should I uh, accept the proposal of this person and marry this person or I shouldn't? So you pray Salat al-Istikhara, you make Dua al-Istikhara, and then after that, you continue in the process. Okay? That's what you're supposed to do. You continue in the process. And then you're going to see some things that are going to happen that maybe will show you that uh, if, if this situation goes through, then it's best for you. And if it doesn't, then it is also what is best for you. And at that time, you know that whatever the outcome is and whatever the, the decision that happens out of the situation that you're in, that it is what is best for you. Why? Because before you entered this situation, you put your will and your dependence in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we have a phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Wa brother Qaddaf from, from Egypt. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, um, I, I just want to ask some questions. Please. Actually, I have two questions. The first question is regarding praying for the dead person, like the Salat and Janazah. Uh, my question is, uh, do we pray for the dead person at any time, or do we have to wait until the time for congregational prayer to pray to him? The second question is regarding a divorced uh, woman. Do we have to keep her in a home, or do does she have to live in her home until the Idda time pass? Mm. So these are my questions. Okay, khairan, Brother Qaddaf. Um, these questions, I would classify them as fatwa questions. So I would, uh, I would ask Brother Qaddaf and any brother and sister who has questions uh, like these types of questions to either ask your local imam or to uh, call in in our program on, on Sunday nights and uh, Tuesday nights and Friday nights called Ask Huda and ask the sheikhs uh, these questions, inshallah. They will give you a, a clear and a concise answer, inshallah. Uh, our phone numbers, my dear brothers and sisters, are open, like I said, throughout the episode. So feel free, inshallah, to give us a call at 002 248 248 or 249, inshallah. Uh, we have uh, a comment from Sister Ummi. She says, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, akhi Usama. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm Saadiyya, Ummi Saadiyya. I'm living in Canada. And I hope, inshallah, to be together in paradise. And all brothers and sisters, please pray for me and every Muslim. Ameen. Ameen. Zakallah khairan. Sister, sister Saadiyya, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you and uh, unite me, you and all our Muslim brothers and sisters in Jannah bi ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make everything easy for you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you happiness in this life and grant you Jannah in the next life bi ta'ala. Uh, we have uh, another comment from Sister Asma. She says, Assalamu alaikum, my brother, Jazakallah khairan. I'm proud of you, brother. Please keep doing, inshallah, uh, the great work. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for you. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you his mercy, your sister in Islam, Asma. Jazakallah khairan, Sister Asma. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. And subhanallah, uh, I, I say this uh, often. 
the, the thing that I really request and I ask from brothers and sisters is dua. Uh, if, if you ask me what do you want uh, in this life from, uh, from uh, making da'wah programs or being involved in da'wah, from, from this worldly perspective, I just want your da'wah. That's it. Nothing else. Just make da'wah for me, make da'wah for my wife and, and for, for, for my family, inshallah. Jazakallah khair. Um, let me take a, a phone call. Um, actually, not a phone call. Let me take a, a question about something that, that uh, is very important. I remember this question right here. Uh, a question about movies and, and sitcoms. Now, a sister uh, is asking me, and she's saying, um, I want to know if watching movies is haram or not. And if it is haram, how easily can I stop it? And please pray for me, please. Jazakallah khairan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as I say, grant you happiness in this life and grant you jannah in the next life. A very, very, very important issue. Movies and sitcoms. As you know, of course, there are tons and tons of uh, movie channels and uh, sitcoms are uh, on TV. And the question that I want to ask you right now, my dear brother and sister, you chose right now to turn to this channel and you left all the other channels. When you're watching an Islamic channel as you're watching right now, do you have the same feeling as when you watch one of these haram channels or one of these haram programs? Do you have the same feeling of in your heart that you feel good inside of your heart or do you feel bad? That's the question that I want to ask you. See, subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted us the, the opportunity to have an Islamic channel and to be talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be talking about Islam. But most of us, my dear brothers and sisters, if you just flip your channel to the next channel, you're going to see something haram. And we'll continue to talk about that inshallah. Uh, if I can ask the brothers, if, we, if they can just tell me the name and the country of the person. We have a phone call inshallah. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Brother Abdul Hakim from Nigeria. Go ahead brother. Uh, my question is actually from Qatini uh, Dev Salatul Istikhara. Yes. My question is, is that? The question is about Salat al Istikhara and the phone line cut off. Inshallah, uh, Brother Abdul Hakim try to give us a call back. Uh, going back to the issue of movies. See, my dear brothers and sisters, all of us have the chance to have any type of channel on uh, our television. Okay, especially in, in this time that we live in right now. But at the same time, we have a choice, either to watch or not to watch. Okay? Now, why, why uh, do scholars say that watching movies and watching sitcoms, the ones that we know that exist today, are haram? Two main reasons. Okay? Uh, first of all, one of the reasons is not you know, uh, to make life miserable for you. All right? one of, there are two reasons, two main reasons. The first thing, my dear brothers and sisters, is the haram scenes that are in these movies. The haram scenes. Meaning, you're watching a movie, especially uh, for the brothers and also for the sisters. You're watching a movie, my dear brother, and you're seeing uh, half-naked women. And scenes uh, of, of a man and a woman together uh, uh, talking, even if they're just talking in bed. Okay? And you're seeing the, the, the woman, when she goes out, she wears something, and then the camera goes inside of her home, and she's wearing something totally different. And uh, another lady is, is coming out of the shower. And of course, you know more than me uh, these issues. Of course, that's besides uh, you know, movies that have other uh, things in them. Okay? So, and the same thing for the sisters. Sisters were not lowering their gaze. Oh, uh, this uh, actor is really cute. Uh, the way that he's treating this lady is, is really nice. Haram scenes. Okay, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered both men and women to lower their gaze. If you're sitting there and you're staring at a movie, and in these movies people intentionally uh, fake it to try to beautify themselves as much as they can, so that they can be a fitna to the believers. SubhanAllah. And I'm talking about all types of movies. I, I'm not only talking about American movies. I'm talking about American movies and sitcoms. I'm talking about Arab. I'm talking about Turkish. I'm talking about Indian. I'm talking about Bollywood and I'm talking about Hollywood and I'm talking about every other type of wood that I'm sorry to say this my dear brothers and sisters but these people if they continue in this path and they do not repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the day of judgment is not going to be Hollywood and Bollywood they're going to be the wood themselves to the hellfire and you my dear brother and my dear sister if you continue watching this every single moment that you're watching these haram movies and these haram sitcoms and the likes music videos whatever you're getting a bad deed. 
For every single second, you're getting bad deeds. Again, the first reason, as I said, is the haram scenes. The second reason, which I believe is more important and more disastrous than the first reason, the filthy ideas that are expressed in these movies. And I want you to concentrate with me very carefully, my dear brothers and sisters. The filthy ideas that are expressed in these movies. See, my dear brothers and sisters, anybody who writes a movie, okay, or a sitcom, every single word in there and every single thing is planned out, okay? There's nothing, uh, as in this program, I just have main ideas and I come here and I say uh, the ideas, but I don't have a script. I'm not speaking word for word. But in movies and sitcoms, every single word is part of the script, okay? And the reason for that is because there's some sort of message that the director or that the writer or the producer of the movie is trying to get across. And these ideas are filthy ideas. When you see, my dear brother or my dear sister, uh, a man and a woman that are not married to each other, and they're going out and they're having fun, and everything is going really well for them, and they're not being punished by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even though they're not praying and they feel that they're really happy, and what do you think? Oh, you're like, mashallah, this is, this is really nice. Uh, I'm, I'm really happy uh, uh, about what's happening, and I really want them to continue in this relationship. SubhanAllah, let me sit down because this is a, a big issue that, that we want to talk about inshallah So let me uh, continue talking about it while we're sitting Okay, so you're watching a movie and then all of a sudden uh, the, At the beginning you see uh, brothers uh, and, and sisters uh, in that movie Okay, and it's a whole group and then out of that group comes out one man and one woman And they look at each other, one look, another look and they fall in love Okay, what is the next thing that's happening in your mind? You want them to continue in that relationship, even though you know it is a haram relationship. And then of course in the middle of the movie, a conflict, a conflict happens between them. So for example, uh, you know, she hears from her friend that this man uh, cheated on her, and he, he's saying, that, oh, I didn't cheat on her. So subliminally, what, in your mind, what are you trying to think? You're thinking, oh, I wish that they get back together. You get what I'm saying? You wish that they get back together? Is that, is that what you wish for? Are you wishing for the haram? Are you wishing for a haram relationship to take place between two people as a Muslim? Is that what you're really wishing for? And then subliminally you're also thinking, oh, it's okay. What's the problem with really being uh, uh, having a boyfriend and a, and a girlfriend? It's not really a, a big deal. And that is only one of the many, many subliminal messages that are sent in these types of haram movies. Whether, like I said, whether it's Arab, whether it's, uh, it's Turkish, whether it's, uh, um, you know, uh, whether it's, it's Hollywood movies, Bollywood movies, whatever it is. And then you start saying, for example, of course, you know, as many of these uh, Turkish and, and Arab and, and, and American movies, for example, the lady cheats on her husband with this other man. So subliminally, you're thinking to yourself, oh, you know, I really feel sorry, sorry for her because her husband is treating her bad, so she was really forced to get into this relationship. See where, where these messages are getting, uh, getting us? So two main reasons, my dear brothers and sisters, that make these movies and these sitcoms haram. And like I said, one of these reasons is not to make your life miserable, is not to be an extremist, is not any of these things. But the, the two main reasons, and of course there are other reasons, but the two main reasons, number one, is the haram scenes. Every single moment that you're watching these haram uh, scenes, my dear brothers and sisters, you're getting bad deeds for every single moment. Okay? And the second thing is the, fel the filthy ideas that are being promoted in these movies and in these sitcoms. Now, practically speaking, uh, right now I told you the reasons why it's not allowed, the reasons why it's haram. But practically speaking, what can you do? What you can do, my dear brothers and sisters, and I'm just going to say it straight up. After this program is done, inshallah, look at how many channels you have on your dish. And you're going to find that you have between 400 to 500. Some of you have more, some of you have 700 or up to 1,000. This is what I did at my home, and my wife and my family are witness to this. Okay? Categorize all the channels, and this should be done by the head of the household. It shouldn't be done by, by anybody uh, in the house. Whether it, it's, uh, it can be done by the husband or it can be done uh, uh, by the wife. Okay? Uh, the, the father and the mother. Now, what you should do, simply 
there's a red button on your remote control that says delete. Any haram channel, delete it. When I say haram, I'm talking about the entire channel is haram. If the entire channel is haram, meaning this, this channel is dedicated simply to Bollywood movies, delete. This channel is dedicated exclusively for action American movies, delete. And we're going to delete more channels, inshallah, after we take this phone call. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Muhammad, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother, what country are you calling from? Yeah, I'm calling from Chad, brother. For brother from Chad, mashallah, mashallah. Assalamu alaikum, brother. Yeah, yeah. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi Thanks a lot for, for this episode. And then, You're welcome, yeah, Allah reward you for that. Ameen. Wa alaikum, ya Rabbi. Go ahead, brother. And, and they will pray for you. Uh, I just want to ask about football. You are just uh, saying something about the movies, so that's why I want to know yes. a bit about uh, football. Some people are spending their time watching football four or five hours, going to different cinemas and then yes. uh, different stadiums for football. So that's why I want to know, is it the same thing as movies or... Sure, inshallah, uh, I'll, I'll answer you with Nile. I'll answer you with Nile. Okay, thank you so much, brother. Um, okay, going back to the movies <coughs> about the issue of deleting. These channels that are exclusively uh, dedicated to movies, sitcoms, music videos. Oh, here's the cha this channel MTV. Okay, of course MTV does not stand for Muslim Television. Uh, okay, it stands for for something else, as you know. Delete. This is what you have to do. If if you want to be truthful with Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, you have to delete it. Well, you can tell me why why should I delete it? I'm just not going to watch it, but I should just leave it on there. The question is why. Why are you going to leave it if you're not going to watch it? And the shaitan is going to come to you at moments while you're flipping channels. Okay, you're flipping from this Islamic channel, and then there's a, a music uh, channel in the middle, and then there's another Islamic channel. So you flip from the Islamic channel, and you move to the music channel, and something catches your eye. Okay, then you start watching, and you fall into the haram. And subhanAllah, who knows what might happen to you after that. So the best thing to do is delete. When I say delete, I'm talking about channels that are exclusively dedicated to movies, exclusively dedicated to sitcoms, exclusively dedicated to music videos and the likes. Now, you have another type of channel, of course, which is our Islamic channels. Of course, if they are on, uh, uh, from Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, then definitely keep these, uh, these channels, inshallah, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala re uh, reward you for it. Now, you have other types of channels where there's a mix. There's a mix between uh, of course, like news programs and talk shows that are, are informational and educa uh, educational. And these same channels have sitcoms and movies and other things. So in my opinion, what you should do in this case is try your best to avoid these channels. Don't delete them, but try your best to avoid these channels at the times that you know that these sitcoms and these movies are going to be on. And then when the times come for the news programs and the talk shows and, and everything, inshallah, then you should try uh, uh, to, to learn from them and be educated about what's happening in the world. And because, uh, of course, you know, many of these uh, uh, programs are, are educational and we're able to learn uh, about the situations of our brothers and sisters around the world in these channels, inshallah. Uh, the question about the football, I'm going to answer it ta'ala and talk just a little bit more about the issue of movies when we come back from a break, ta'ala. so stay with us. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, narrated that when Allah, glory be to him, wishes good for someone, he bestows upon him understanding of the religion and that Allah makes the path to paradise easy for those who seek knowledge. Preoccupied by work or family in the modern world, a Muslim may struggle to find time for acquiring Islamic knowledge. To ease this struggle, we are launching Hoda Academy to be your gateway to online Islamic e-learning. Enroll now and study from our renowned scholars. Learn Aqidah from Dr. Muhammad Salah. Learn Fiqh from Dr. Hatim al Hajj. Learn Hadith from Dr. Muhammad Saeed. Learn Tafsir from Sheikh Ibrahim Zidan. And learn Arabic from our professional instructors. Successful graduates of Hoder Academy will go through a final test and eventually receive a certificate of completion. To enroll and learn more about Hoder Academy, please visit us online 
at hudaonlineacademy.com. Huda Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Dear viewers, Huda programs can be watched in the English section of the in-flight entertainment directory on board all Saudi airline flights, domestic and international. Sit back, relax and enjoy watching Huda's entertaining and enlightening shows on your trip. Hoda wishes you a safe and successful journey. Hoda, a light in every home. Now my world is bright. Islam is my sign. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, welcome back to the special episode of our program, The Straight Path, dedicated to uh, discussing with you your thoughts and your comments and taking your questions and trying my best inshallah to answer them uh, I, before I continue on the issue of movies and, and uh, football and soccer let me take a phone call from brother Fahim from Saudi Arabia brother Fahim salam alaikum wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh sir I, I feel uh, it's uh, I feel happy to be back with you Zakallah khairan go ahead brother uh, Muhammad, uh, brother Fahim go ahead Yes, sir. The, the question is regarding tahajjud. You know, I have been trying to pray tahajjud in the night, mm -hmm. but I, I don't really know how to pray it. Like, uh, uh, it is just like the normal prayer, like what uh, 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 then Alhamdu and some Quran mm -hmm. ayah, and is it like that? Or? Yes, uh, I'll answer you, Ibn Allah Ta'ala. Zakallah khairan, Brother Fahim. First of all, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you, Brother Fahim, for having the thought of praying uh, Salat al-Tahajjud praying night prayer and uh, subhanallah such a great blessing for a person that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even gives them the opportunity to think about praying Salat al-Tahajjud so, because th this uh, th this special prayer is really the prayer of the true believers those who are truly in love with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make all of us amongst them bi ta'ala the way you pray Salat al-Tahajjud Salat al-Tahajjud begins anytime after Aisha prayer, until b right before uh, Fajr prayer, okay, until the moment where Fajr prayer comes in. Any time in in this time is called Salat al Tahajjud or called uh, uh, night prayer or called Qiyam al Layl. Of course, depends where we are. Of course, in Ramadan, it's also called Taraweeh. Regardless of the name, it is a, a, a Sunnah prayer. It's not fard that you pray any time after Salat al Aisha until Fajr time, okay. So how do you pray it? Two rakahs each. All right. Then of course you can have shafa and water, but that's something different. But when you're talking specifically about night prayer, then you pray two rakahs and two rakahs. And just like any other uh, type of uh, of salah, where you say uh, you say surah al-fatiha and then you say a short surah, and then you make ruku'a, sujood, just like any type of uh, of salah, you make the two rakahs and then you say assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullah, and then you continue uh, and you, then you get up again and then you make uh, two more rakahs. Now, uh, uh, the Prophet Sallallahu used to make the first two rakahs uh, short. Okay, so the first two rakahs you can, uh, most of the time, used to make the first two rakahs short. So you can make the first two rakahs short to short surahs, maybe uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas, Qullahu Allah Ahad, uh, Surah Al-Nas, uh, short surahs. And then after that, after that, then if you're going to pray more rakahs, then uh, you should make them longer as uh, you go, inshallah. The best time to pray Qiyam al-Layl, to, to, uh, Qiyam al-Layl comes from standing at night. This is what basically means to, to be standing at night. Standing at night in prayer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the last third of the night. The last third of the night is the time that uh, you, is the best time for praying Salat uh, Qiyam al-Layl. And how do you calculate that? Right when night comes in, after Salat al-Maghrib until uh, uh, Salat al-Fajr, the third, the last third in that, okay, you should go ahead and, and pray Qiyam al-Layl. And let me give you some tips, inshallah. Try this uh, to begin with. The first step, okay, to make it easy on yourself is right after you pray Salat uh, al-Aisha, pray two rakahs. And take the intention that this is Qiyam al-Layl and it is Qiyam al-Layl, okay. And then try to move to a different step where you wake up 10 minutes or 15 minutes before Salat al-Fajr. Okay, so you started right here on Salat al-Aisha. Now, let's take a leap 
and, and uh, kind of take it from the other uh, way around, okay? You have Salat al-Fajr, uh, wake up 15 minutes before Fajr comes in, make wudu quickly, inshallah, pray two rak'ahs. You'll know the feeling when you do it, inshallah. Then that way, you, your first step is you pray two rak'ahs right after Salat al-Aisha, and then you move to a second step where you prayed uh, two rak'ahs right before uh, Salat al-Fajr, okay? And then from there, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open doors for you. And I know people, subhanAllah, who stay up the entire night praying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. People who stay up half of the night, people who stay up a third of the night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them. And the main thing about these people, when you see them, you'll see light on their faces. When I say light, it doesn't have anything to do with your skin color. I've seen my dear brothers and sisters, uh, uh, brothers, who their faces are the darkest of uh, 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 the darkest faces, meaning skin tone, and their faces are full of light. Subhanallah. And I've seen exactly the opposite: people with the lightest and the lightest of skin tone and skin color, and you look at their faces and you don't feel too good, and you feel that their faces are dark, even though their skin tone is is really light. So may Allah subhanahu wa taala reward you, brother Fahim, and may Allah subhanahu wa taala make me, you, and everyone amongst the people who have this great honor of being people who perform Qiyamul Layl, people who perform the night prayer. As I said, very simply, two rak'ahs, two rak'ahs each, two rak'ahs each, inshaAllah. And just like any other sunnah salah that you pray, you say Surah Al-Fatiha and you say a short surah, or of course, uh, as I said, uh, this is for the first two rak'ahs. If you're going to pray more, then try to elongate a bit and try to uh, read longer surahs. And uh, if uh, you don't know long surahs, it, it is uh, acceptable in Islam. If this is a sunnah prayer, if it's not a fourth prayer, to uh, to read from the Qur'an, if you're able uh, to read in Arabic, inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Now, uh, let me go back to the issue of movies and sitcoms and uh, the issue also of, of soccer and football. Okay. I'm talking about this issue a lot because it's really, I believe, one of the biggest issues that, that we're dealing with on an individual level. And it's really a, a killer of the heart. Okay? Because you can be watching an Islamic program right now, and then what are you going to do? You're going to turn the channel and you're going to watch a haram movie. All the good ideas that came in your mind right now are going to be taken out by these haram movies and haram music videos and, and haram sitcoms and, and all of these things. So, like I said, in Islam, it's not only uh, recommended to add, but it's also recommended and it's a must to delete. So you should add and delete. And in many times you have to delete before you add. Okay? A concept in Islam called at takhliya qabla at tahliya Okay? Where you delete the bad and then you add the good. Because if you don't delete the bad, where's the space in your heart for the good to grow? Okay? Now, how do you delete the bad in this specific example? Delete the channels. These haram channels are exclusively for movies, exclusively for sitcoms, exclusively for uh, haram uh, scenes and all of these things. Absolutely delete them from your television. Okay? Uh, now, as I said, when it comes to issues where you have a channel that has both, be the monitor of yourself. Okay, and be the judge of yourself and remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. If there's something haram, stay away from it. If there's something good and beneficial, try to watch it and educate yourself, inshallah. Now, uh, another way, as I said, we're adding and we're deleting. Uh, I'm sorry, we're deleting and then we're adding, okay? So we deleted. Now, what are we going to add? Add the Qur'an. Add halal entertainment. Okay, add, uh, subhanAllah, Islamic lectures. Add uh, Islamic uh, talk shows or talk shows that talk about good things. Add Islamic nasheeds. Okay? Have, have, uh, have halal fun, inshaAllah. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help you in this issue of staying away from the haram movies, the haram sitcoms, the haram uh, music videos, and the likes, inshaAllah. Now, the issue of football and soccer. In essence, sports, in essence, is not something that is haram. Also, watching sports is not haram unless it prevents you from doing an obligation or if you're being excessive in it, okay? So for example, as the brother was saying when he called, people who go to the stadium and they stay there for five hours to watch a game. Now, are you staying there for five hours and you're missing your salah? I know people who go uh, to the stadium on a Friday because they want to watch the game at night and they go there before Jum'ah and they end up missing Jum'ah and they miss, uh, they miss Salat al Asr and of course they miss Salat al Maghrib and by the time they go home they're too tired to pray Salat al Isha so they've missed four prayers. Okay? So 
if it is causing you uh, to be excessive, and if you feel that you're not fulfilling your obligations with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then try to lessen it. But uh, in essence, there's, uh, there's nothing wrong with the, the actual fact of watching uh, uh, like a, a football or a soccer match, whether it's in the stadium or if it's on television. Again, as, as long as you're not being excessive and as long as you're not uh, wasting your time in doing it, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Uh, we have uh, uh, also a comment. Uh, Sister Maryam says, "Thank you, thank you very much. I really like your program, The Straight Path. Congratulations! It's so great. It helps me a lot and gives inspirations for the people who are new in Islam. May Allah guide you more, inshallah. Zakatullah khairan, Sister Maryam. May Allah subhanahu wa taala reward you. Uh, I have a, a, a comment." Uh, from a sister from Palestine. Uh, she says, uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Brother Osama. Uh, my name is Rawan from Palestine and I am from Ramallah. And I'm originally from, from Al-Quds. Uh, and I, I joined your page and I wanted to be part of your page on Facebook and uh, to uh, connect with you inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, protect you and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you. Zakallah khairan, Sister Rawan. And I ask brothers and sisters uh, if you want to be updated uh, about uh, this program or about any of the Dawah activities, just uh, join my Facebook page, inshallah. The page is facebook.com slash Osama al Shami. Facebook.com slash Osama al Shami. And I should be appearing on your screen shortly, inshallah ta'ala. Um, now, uh, let me take uh, another question. Oh, this is a very, very important question. Uh, the question says, Assalamu alaikum, Usama. This is an urgent question that someone close to me is asking. If you could respond to it, your reward is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I think that this question is asked by many, but this sister is going through it. I have a similar question about the prayer. Jazakallah khairan in advance. The message says, I've been searching for happiness, but I always find myself looking in the wrong places. I've reached the point praying just because I have to, and not because I love to. I'm worried that my heart is drifting further and further away from Allah, and I feel lost without His guidance. I fear that my actions lack sincerity, and I'm eager to get that sincerity back. If you could help me find a solution to my problem, I would appreciate it. Zakallah uh, khair and sister for your, for your question. Now, this is a very important issue. All of us, when we uh, start going on the path of Islam, we have this great sweetness of faith in our hearts and we feel so eager to be on the straight path. And then after a while, we, we move from the ibadah to something called al-adah, where our ibadah, our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just becomes just another part of our routine. Prayer, okay, I need to pray five times a day. Okay, let me, let me just try to pray right now because I need to do this other thing right after it. How do you end the cycle of falling into the routine where you feel that uh, you're not feeling your prayer as the sister said you're doing it not because you love to but you could, because you have to the most important thing my dear brothers and sisters in in this issue and I talked about this in a previous lecture called uh, 3d Muslim is to become a 3d Muslim as a Muslim we should be 3d what is 3d mean basically you can go back to the lecture on on YouTube inshallah but basically we should have the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should